So total variation, we've been talking about variation and variance pretty much from the beginning. This is the total variation. Uh, it's basically equal to the sum of squares of errors that we've been cal that we calculated in the last section, plus the sum of squares among treatments that we calculated a few lessons ago. So you see, total variation is nothing more than the sum of these two things that we've been uh, learning about. So this guy is the sum of squares of errors, and this is the sum of squares among treatments. So it's the two types of 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 uh, variation that we've been studying so far. When you add them together, you get the total variation. So in order to calculate it for our particular problem, uh, it's going to be the sum of squares of errors that we've calculated is 113.4, and the sum of squares among treatments is 24.066667. I know I'm carrying a lot of decimals. Uh, and so the total variation, you can abbreviate it total variation or just write it out, total variation, for this problem is 137.466667. And you can write that down and circle that. So I could just stop there and say, hey, guys, total variation. You just add them together, and then that's, what, that's it. It's a total variation. But I want to go a little deeper to see if you know, maybe you can understand a little bit more about where it's coming from. So for our particular problem, don't forget, we have three populations. We have the different people in the different states. So here's population one, here's population two, and here's population three. That's the kind of picture that we've been drawing all together. Now, don't forget that inside population one, we don't know the data, so we sample it. We don't know all the data. We can't know all the data, so we sample. So we say that n sub one is equal to some number. n sub two is equal to some number. n sub three is equal to some number. That's the sampling. That's the numbers that we get, right? Um, so what we've learned is that when we take a look at this individual set of samples that we've pulled out, we can calculate, of course, a sample mean, but we can also calculate the sum of squares of errors, which is how spread apart this data is inside of this population compared to the sample mean, which is the average value of all of those guys right here. So basically, if I take a look at these, these samples right here, then what I can learn from it is I can calculate um, how each sample, sample, varies with respect to, that's what WRT, with respect to its sample mean. Which the sample mean is X bar, right? So this was basically SSE, sum of squares of error. So this type of variation is when you dive inside of the population that you have and the samples that you've taken and you try to figure out how much variation there is in the data that you've collected compared to the individual sample mean that you have because you've, you've, you can sum it all up. So that's kind of like a microscopic view. You look inside of there. Now, of course, in all the uh, populations we're sampling, so we sample some more from here. So we have samples inside of here. And then we, of course, sample inside of here, too, samples. And we don't have to have the same number of samples. In our example, we've done 10 samples everywhere, but we could do 6 samples, 10 samples, and 12 samples. That's okay. A nova works fine. But anyway, whereas we can dive into here and look at the SSE, the variation of these points, these sample data points compared to the sample mean, we can also go and take a look at more of a global view. We can calculate the actual sample mean, X bar number 2, and we can say that that's equal to some number that we can calculate. <clears throat> okay, And we can also take a look at how each sample mean varies with respect to the grand mean. So it's more of a global view of what the data is doing, right? And we call this concept sum of squares among treatments. <clears throat> all right. So all we're basically saying is this concept of total variation is like if you could zoom down into an individual data point, the variance of this data point compared to everything, the grand mean, is composed of two things. It's composed of how this data point varies with respect to the sample mean, which you get from finding this guy out and calculating, plus the variations of the sample means compared to everything that we call the grand mean. Those two variations added together is what we call total variation. I'm going to say that one more time in a slightly different way because that's kind of a, should be a little bit of an aha thing. 
Basically, we do two calculations. We look at how the data varies compared to the sample mean, and then we look at how the sample means vary compared to the giant grand mean, which is the baseline. So then, once we break it up into components like that, looking at an individual data point, its variation compared to the grand mean can be broken down into two components. One component is how this data point varies with respect to its sample mean, the sample mean of these points, plus the vari variation of how the sample mean varies compared to all of the points. That's going to tell us how these points vary compared to the entire baseline. All that is is total variation. That's why we add them together. SSE, you can think of it as a microscopic view inside of this box at how spread apart the data is. And SST, you can think of a global view of how the sample means are changing or different compared to the global uh, 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 grand mean. So when you add them together you're getting the total variation of the data points compared to the baseline and that's what we're doing there. I don't really need to say any more about it, I don't need to belabor it anymore, that's basically what total variation is. All you do is you add these numbers together and you get a number called total variation and that's what the concept is. So believe it or not you're actually done with the hard part of learning ANOVA. The hard parts are learning what SSE is, SSTR is, and the concept of total variation. Next section, we'll start to put things together to start to actually construct our test and make some forward progress in, in learning how to solve one of these problems. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.